Are you a freelancer actively working on Upwork and not sure how to find the right projects for you? Then this video is just right for you because we'll take a look at this process together. Hi, my name is Melchior from Contest Tax Consulting and I used to very actively freelance on Upwork a few years ago. I really did a bunch of projects on Upwork in the past and acquired some clients through it and paid my living that way. But admittedly, finding projects is not that easy and there are thousands, tens of thousands of projects on Upwork and it's not easy to get an overview and to know whether a project is really the right one for you and whether your chances are big enough. That's why we're going to take a closer look in this video at how the whole search and the filter functions for all the projects work. I'll take you with me onto my screen and we'll look for a job together. If we want to find a project, we should first think about what we can actually do and which projects we actually want to work on. Since I'm spending a lot of time with YouTube right now and how to get subscribers on this channel, or not just on this channel, but in general, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. That means that I'm thinking a lot about YouTube and YouTube marketing. And I think to myself, it might not be too bad to earn a little money on the side as a freelancer. And why shouldn't I just see if other companies don't need help with that too? And can I help them with that? To find jobs, we have the overview right here in the middle. Here, we're on the home page of Upwork, and we see the overview of all the possible jobs here. What's important here, though, is that this is my feed. That means that Upwork really only shows me the jobs here that I might be interested in. Those are based primarily on my saved searches. And then Upwork always shows me all the jobs here that match one of my saved jobs from the search. German jobs. Since I've already worked for some customers, here I could check out what my previous customers from Germany, Austria, and Switzerland need right now. Marketing in the roofing business is here, or community manager. I could select all of those, but I won't do that for now. Because first, I'm going to take a look at what the best matches are. So what does Upwork actually think are the most suitable jobs for me? This is based on the skills I have in my profile, which projects I've done in the past, which of them were successful, and generally the description of my profile. Or I really just go chronologically and take a look at which projects were posted last and whether that could possibly be a fit for me. To give you a feeling for how many projects are actually published on Upwork, just have a look at when the last projects were published. Here, for example, 7 minutes ago, 8 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, 12 minutes ago, 13 minutes ago, 14 minutes ago. Here, projects really do come in every minute and you can apply for these projects. So there's definitely enough to do. What might be an important note here is that I always, when I was looking for jobs, divided it into two steps. Firstly, sifting through the possible projects and secondly, applying for them. Jumping back and forth always distracted me and was just very, very inefficient. That's why I always looked at the job ads and everything that was potentially interesting for me and saved everything that was potentially interesting for me as a favorite. I even did that frequently with the mobile app and could then, when I was ready to apply for the jobs, simply look at the saved jobs again and that way I would always find them again. I use that a lot, but honestly I have to say that I'm not a home remote virtual assistant for customer service. I want to help companies become successful on YouTube, so that's exactly what I should be doing. And for that I have a search function up here. Just type in YouTube and it will suggest a whole range of possible activities. So I could do YouTube marketing, work as an editor on YouTube, video editing, okay that's almost the same thing, creating videos, creating thumbnails, editing, creating an intro, search engine optimization for YouTube. So there's obviously a whole bunch of YouTube projects, but I'll just click on YouTube here because I'm not sure yet and I don't want to make the selection too small. That's why I click on YouTube to have a look at all the projects that companies around the world need for YouTube. Here we can see that there are currently 7,421 open projects on the topic of YouTube. Of course, that's an insane number. And if I had to look through them all one by one, I'd be busy for quite a long time. Of course, it's a good thing to have so many projects to choose from. Then again, you might want to narrow down the search a bit to have a better selection. We can do that here on the left side. The first thing is your experience level. There are three different experience levels here, and those are beginner, intermediate, and expert. And of course, the more experience you have, the more you can earn, and you can get higher hourly rates for the projects. Keep in mind though, that Upwork is a global platform. 
You will be competing with freelancers from the Philippines, for example. There, the cost of living is not as high, which is why Filipino freelancers are more likely to be able to offer cheaper hourly rates than someone who has to pay German living expenses. That's why the entry level is not very interesting for most freelancers in Germany. You would have to be at least at the intermediate or expert level to actually see the jobs then. But we see here that even there, we still have about 2,000 jobs that can be found. In the next step, you can set how much you actually want to earn. So what is the minimum or maximum you need? Here, you can first look for projects that are paid by the hour or that have a fixed project price. Personally, I've always been quite happy to do hourly projects, which is why I choose that. And now I can answer here, for example, that I want to earn at least $50 per hour for this job. An important aspect is, of course, the competition on the projects. If there are already more than 100 people, so more than 100 freelancers interested in a project, you might be the 101st. However, projects where currently only a few freelancers have shown interest or have actively applied for might be more interesting and you can stand out more. The probability that you will get the job is much higher. So here, I usually set it between zero and 10. Another important point is the history of the client. It could be that the client is new to Upwork and just wants to try it out, but may have decided against it again because he doesn't like the platform and then he might never answer you. It's safer if you have a client who already has successfully completed and paid for several projects with this platform. And so here you can choose companies that really actively use Upwork. In the next step, you can still consider, for example, where your client's headquarters should be. That's something interesting when, for example, I may want to offer tax consulting or accounting services. I know German tax law quite well and I can do German accounting, but I don't know how it works in China or India. That's why it would make sense here, for example, for me to choose Germany. It doesn't matter with YouTube. The algorithm is roughly the same worldwide. The length of the project is also interesting. Hourly projects, in particular, are often designed for a certain period of time, and you can take on a project that lasts two weeks or more than six months. We see here that there are 38 jobs that are planned for more than six months, and that can be interesting for you, of course. The next step is, what does the client expect? How much time will the job take? And there you can choose more than 30 hours or less than 30 hours per week. 30 hours per week is a lot. So if you're over 30 hours, probably one client would be enough for you. And here I see that there are really 26 jobs that go over 30 hours a week and are paid $50 an hour. I can definitely pay my living expenses with that in Germany. That would be $1,500 per week and 6,000 per month. That would be a project where one customer alone would be enough for rent and living expenses. That's why I use the filter option. So now that we filtered by the right criteria, we're left with 26 jobs. Now I'll show you how you can recognize a good and a bad project offer. That's what we'll take a closer look at right now. And the second one is already an excellent example because this really doesn't look good. I see this is a job posting, a project posting. It's about content writing, but unfortunately the payment method is not verified. This means that the credit card or bank account has not been deposited yet. There's also never been a project from this client on this platform, so the client hasn't spent any money on Upwork either. The company is from India. This is neither good nor bad, but it's interesting information. The title says, content writer needed for my YouTube channel. When we click on it, we see the description of the job and see that the client has managed to write in almost one line all his needs as well as introduce himself. Very, very short. He needs a content writer to somehow make his YouTube channel grow. It doesn't say what his content writer is supposed to do. It doesn't say what kind of channel it is. And also it would be pretty easy to post a link to that channel here. I can't even properly address the customer with my application because I don't know exactly what the customer actually does. I also don't know what I should do. Would I be writing the scripts? Would I do the description of the videos? Would I maybe be doing SEO? None of that really makes sense to me. Especially when I look at the fact that there are over 30 hours scheduled for longer than six months at expert level. It doesn't really seem like this client really means exactly what they're saying. And there are two reasons why you shouldn't apply to projects like this. The first reason is that the probability that a contract will be signed is relatively low. You're putting time into the application now and the likelihood that no one will ever respond is fairly high. Secondly, even if it does work out, I've had the experience in the past that especially with projects where the client is not 100% clear on what they actually want and how the whole thing is supposed to work, 
the blame gets shifted to the freelancer because without a precise idea, without a precise description of the activity, and also a clear expectation, it's of course very difficult for the freelancer to meet any requirements. And that always leads to dissatisfaction on both sides, both on your side as a freelancer and on the side of the client, which leads to a lot of stress and in the end, unfortunately, quite often ends in a bad evaluation. That's why I can only advise you not to apply for that kind of projects. But let's try to find a better example. This offer looks much better. It is featured. The featured is already quite good. That means that the client has spent money to have this shown more prominently. I also see that the client has a plus account. That's also very, very good. That means that the client has a higher payment plan on Upwork. I can also see that the payment method is verified and the rating is positive. This company has already received feedback from 77 freelancers and has an average rating of 4.71 stars. So that's pretty solid. And the company has already spent over 90,000 euros on Upwork. Overall, this company is used to working with freelancers on Upwork and already knows how the whole thing works. I also see here that there are less than five applications so far. So less than five freelancers have applied for this project. That looks interesting to me at first glance. So I'll click on it to see more details. Again, you can see that the whole thing is somehow more professionally planned and more interesting for you as a freelancer. Here you can see what you would be needed for and your areas of responsibility. In the next section, it says what challenges you have to meet. So what is the expectation of the company? What should you be able to do? This is communicated relatively clearly. The last section says something about the client. This is also important, of course, because it may be that you're good at something, but you don't want to do it in a certain market or you can't do it. This information, so what you're responsible for, what you have to be able to do and who you are is really important. And for me personally, this would be an example of a very good project that I would then apply for. I hope that in this video, you learned how the filters and search function on Upwork work and how you can find the right job for you. By the way, this video is part of a whole series. We have recorded a few videos on freelancing, how to get clients as a freelancer on freelancing platforms, how you can earn money on the internet and what you have to pay attention to bureaucratically in Germany. The whole thing is embedded into a larger initiative in which we want to help Ukrainian freelancers to find projects in Germany and earn a living online. We have also created a Telegram group where we are happy to answer any questions you may have. If you have any questions about finding a project, questions about your profile or German bureaucracy for self-employed people, feel free to ask all your questions here. You can find the link to the group below in the video description. We're happy to answer all questions in the group in English and Ukrainian. This is also the reason why this video is also available in English and Ukrainian and I'll just link both videos here and here.